There are a few stories, as I like to say, that are concerning to me at the very least, I'm sure to many, many others. Um, For one, out of Canada, this morning I saw a brand new story out of the National Catholic Register. The headline goes, Canadian Diocese Requires COVID-19 Vaccination to Attend Mass. Here we go again. Here we go again. Um, Here's a little bit of the article. A Catholic diocese in Canada will be requiring proof of vaccination and identity verification for anyone age 12 or older to attend Mass or other events held at parishes. Quote, effective October the 22nd, 2021, it will be mandatory for all persons 12 and older wishing to attend masses or services in our churches to demonstrate proof of vaccination by using the vaccine passport in L Vax Pass or by showing proof of vaccination by presenting their QR code before entering our churches, unquote, said an October the 15th letter from Bishop Robert Anthony Daniels of Grand Falls to the priests and pastoral leaders of the diocese. The Diocese of Grand Falls is located in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Its territory is approximately half of the island of Newfoundland. The province enacted its vaccine passport system October the 22nd, requiring residents to download an app and present proof of vaccination to enter non-essential businesses. Hmm. Is the Holy Mass non-essential? Well, therein lies the question. Well, here's what the article says. Houses of worship, along with yoga studios, hair salons, bowling alleys, wedding receptions, indoor restaurants, bingo halls, bars, and hockey arenas are all locations where proof of vaccination is required. So right there is a big, huge red flag, at least for me. And what do I know? But the house of worship, at the very least, is on the same uh, line, the same par with yoga studios, bars, bingo halls. And this is acceptable to, to his excellency. How is this even a thing? I mean, good for you, dear local health officials that you've decided this, but we aren't participating today. It's a simple response. It doesn't require a lot of forethought, but the Holy mass is a gift of, of God to humanity. It is his mercy to us to allow us to be mystically present at the foot of the cross, there to see our Lord and Savior suffer and die for our our sins, that we might have a chance to obtain heaven because too few enter the gate, you know. We just read that in the gospel. And we're going to pretend as though it's uh, not essential? It's definitely essential. There's that. There's definitely that. The article goes on to say, those who have recently turned 12 will have a three-month grace period. Could you imagine your 12th birthday and you are worried about getting your vax pass in time? Oh, my heavens. To receive a COVID-19 vaccination uh, before being subject to the vaccine passport system at churches. Well, you got three months. Per Bishop Daniel's letter. Those wishing to attend Mass in the diocese have to download the NL Vax Pass app or print out a physical copy of their vaccine QR code to show the ushers before they can enter the church. A different app, the NL Vax Verify, will be used to be used by the ushers and greeters or other volunteers to verify vaccination status upon entry. Do you want that job? I wonder. Are you a, an usher? or a greeter at your parish, and would you want the job of verifying that the person coming through the doors has their vaccination status? Are you prepared for that? Is that something you're looking forward to? Uh, Do you want to be put into that that moment of conflict where you're going to be the one to deny these people access to the sacraments because they don't have vaccination status? (sighs) Once vaccination status is verified, a person will then have to show an identification card to go to mass. For anyone 19 or older, this must be a photo identification. This is insane. This is utterly insane. Now, uh, the article, I'm going to skip a little bit here, says uh, the bishop noted that in certain cases where it will be a burden for those attending to provide proof, churches may allow entry with restrictions for pastoral reasons. Examples of these situations include funerals, weddings, he noted, but not, not Sunday obligated mass, communion. How about 
confession. Are, is that regulated too? Or are you moving confessions out to the parking lot to ensure that all human beings properly disposed can receive the sacrament? Hmm. Despite the implementation of the vaccine passport, capacity at masses in the Diocese of Grand Falls is still limited to 50 percent. Congressional singing is prohibited. Praise be to God. That's probably a good thing. Uh, clergy and parishioners must wear non-medical masks at all times. Physical distancing is required, and all who enter the church must write down their information for potential contact tracing. Oh, my. I, 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 I don't even know where to begin. I don't even. It's just so Orwellian and overwhelming to see that the solution is worse than the problem. The disproportionate response to this is mind-numbing. But put that to the side for a second. We're talking about sacraments, mystical, miraculous realities that give us God's actual grace. And we are afraid of the atoms and the molecules and the bacteria and the diseases and the viruses that are creations not the creator. At what point do we just decide supernatural grace is the order of the day? Supernatural faith and courage is the order of the day. Does that mean I want super spreader events? No, it does not mean that. But where there's a will, there is a way. And it boggles the mind that we are continuing to see examples where you have to have a vaccination in order to receive the sacraments. Nowhere in sacred scripture the gospel, patrimony, tradition of the church, early church fathers, anywhere else are you going to find this sort of draconian measure when it comes to the, to the sacraments? St. Charles Borromeo dealing with the plague. What did he do? He said mass outside and ensured his priest still gave communion to those suffering with the plague because it's that important. It's that important. It is mind boggling to me. You can read more of this story on the National Catholic Register's website. Let's turn to something uh, Brother Adrian shared with me yesterday. This is video uh, of a fashion show that is taking place in a parish in, in Puerto Rico. Right, Adrian? That is correct. Could it you, is, uh, now, for those depressing. of you who can't see because you're listening on radio, uh, let me just describe what I'm seeing right now. This is a little. Blessed. This is a video clip of someone attending a uh, a fashion show that's taking place in the sanctuary at a Catholic church in Puerto Rico, and there are women processing up and down the main aisle in various forms of fa air quotes fashion here, and some are more scantily clad than others. But here's the question: Why is it okay? Why would Catholics believe that this is acceptable to hold a fashion show? Let's just say for the sake of the argument that it's, that it's a good cause. They're raising funds for a good cause. Do you know what the cause is, by the way, Adrian? Yes, I believe it was for uh, Victims Against Violence, I think is the name of it. But it wasn't even for the parish or for a Catholic cause. It was a secular charity group. I'm okay with raising money for victims for violence. I have no issue with that. Uh, but was there no space elsewhere? I mean— how about the uh, the parish hall? Most parishes, this looks like a, uh, by the looks of this uh, church, they, look, they looks like they probably could afford a very nice parish hall. I mean, uh, there's marble floors. It's a very well-appointed, you know, church. It looks like they spent some money on the place. So they, I'm sure they have a very nice parish hall. Was that not available? How about the hotel downtown? Was was the hotel ballroom not available? Or how about the the, the about outside? The court. You know, the, the, the courthouse, was the courthouse not available? Was the Protestant church not available? Was, uh, yeah, outside not available? Maybe the weather was bad. Who knows? They could have put up a tent. I don't know. But either way, is it okay and acceptable that we would want to use the holy space where the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where again, we are mystically present, is it okay for us to do that in that space. I feel like this is a violation of something sacred. It's making sacrilege. Not because they weren't trying to do a good thing, 
But because just because one wants to do a good thing does not therefore make it okay to create sacrilege. It's it's very troubling to me. It's very very what concerning to me. Here's another one. Uh, this is a video about a synodal mass in San Bernardino. This is uh, a packed mass. We're looking at video here of uh, wall to wall packed. Praise be to God. Everybody at mass. I love that. But there is a man who's leading the procession into Holy Mass uh, who ha- happens to be someone performing some sort of pagan ritual. He is uh, someone of indigenous culture, and he is performing something uh, uh, of, a, of a liturgical practice of his pagan worship. And then this continues throughout this Mass, the Synodal Mass. How is this also Okay. You know, I thought back when I, when I heard this story, I thought back of Abraham and how God called Abraham in the book of Genesis. God called Abraham from what? His tribe. From among his people, from among his paganism. He mm-hmm. called him out of his tribal paganism to bring him into God's plan for salvation. And according to tradition, Abraham, whenever he saw his... Uh he went back to his father and saw his his father, according to tradition, was an idol maker. So he made idols to false gods. Yeah. And he went and destroyed them all and then put a stick into the hand of the biggest idol there. And when his dad came home freaking out, he, they told him, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. It wasn't me. It was this idol that destroyed all of them. And his dad was like, what are you talking about? Idols can't do that. He's like, exactly. And exactly. why do you worship them? You know, and then, of course, we know that God called uh, Moses to go and lead the people out of slavery in Egypt after 430 years. And they did what? They turned their hearts back to the pagan practices of Egypt in Exodus 32 and worshipped a golden calf and committed fornication and idolatry. And they were condemned because of it. Too few enter the narrow gate. Should we be embracing that which God called us out of. No! Why don't we stop with the experimentations? Why don't we put an end to all of the shenanigans, embrace God's will for our life, embrace Christ Jesus and his economy of salvation through Holy Mother Church and the sacraments? That is charity for neighbor. Truth is charity because it's a person. We'll be right back.